welcome you all in today's webinar titled Mixed Methods Research Design Instrument Development. We from CLS are pleased to announce two webinars on Mixed Methods Research Design. The one today, as is already mentioned, will focus on instrument development, while the next one scheduled for 10th September will look into the ways of data analysis in uh, this type of research. The resource person uh, uh, today is uh, M. Moninur Rashid, PhD. He is an associate professor of English language education in the Institute of Education and Research, IER, University of Dhaka. He completed his, his PhD in teaching English as a second language at Monash University, Melbourne, Australia. He has several publications on English, focusing on English as a lingua franca, international business communication, materials development, discourse analysis, graduates employment, and university industry partnership published by Sense, Rutledge, Springer, Multilingual Matters, and Cambridge Scholars. His recent co-edited book is Engaging in Educational Research, Revisiting Policy and Practice in Bangladesh, published by Springer, Singapore. His forthcoming co-edited book is the Rutledge Handbook of English Language Education in Bangladesh. Now, before commencing the session, I would also like to mention here that we will have the QA session around the end of the webinar for 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and uh, the QA session will be conducted by our colleague, Razia Sultana, Senior Lecturer, Center for Language Studies. So please join me uh, in welcoming Dr. M. Moninur Rashid. Sir, uh, you may begin the session now. Thank you. And please, everyone, please mute your uh, microphones. Thank you. Thank you, Ira Mary. Uh, you already know the title Mixed Method Research Design in Instrument Development. And just we are going to start uh, the overview, just a brief conception of mixed method. And if you look at the different definitions uh, by Preswell or other scholars like Johnson and Christine said, we can see that is the first one that is uh, uh, involves combining and integrating of qualitative and quantitative quality and quantity of research and data in a single study. So that means in a study, so there are two types of two types of uh, process will be integrated or combined. So one will be qualitative and another quantitative. And next uh, definition also similar, this implies more than one uh, type of research method. That is, it not be one single, single uh, type of approach. It can be mixed up uh, different types of research methods. If you look at the number three, they combine the qualitative and quantitative approaches, similar things, a similar definition. And last one, this involves the mixing of quantitative and qualitative methods. So we can find the similarities say, among, the def among the scholars definition, that is what is mixed method research. So mixed method research is actually a combination of qualitative and quantitative research approaches. Let's see that uh, the, just uh, visualize, we have visualized, Kresol has visualized this idea that is, how we can conduct mixed method research. You can see that's on the left side, there's a quantitative data. Let's see some of the feature of mixed method research design. Uh, the first one is a philosophical assumption. Is that in mixed method uh, research design, we use uh, pragmatic uh, knowledge scheme. You can see the pragmatic knowledge scheme number four. Uh, you know, we want to conduct in the research that there are different sort of paradigm, positivism, uh, constructivism, critical approach critical and pragmatism. Uh, is there this in, in uh, mixed method research, we follow pragmatic approaches, uh, pragmatic paradigm. And there's a strategy of inquiry. Strategy of inquiry, there is also whether it will be mixed method or whether it's a qualitative approach and quantitative approach. And here, how we'll conduct this qualitative as a quantitative approach. So there is some design. Uh, you can, you, you have a little bit, you have idea. There's a the different design of, uh, 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 in this sort of inquiry. Uh, one is that is a uh, parallel or concurrent design, and another is uh, sequential design and this transformative design. Okay, so that means uh, uh, parallel design, concurrent design, both qualitative and quantitative data will go together. And there's a sequential that means so one after another, either quantity first, then qualitative, or either quant quality first, quantitative later. So this way it goes. Next on the answer to research questions. So when you conduct mixed method research, easily we focus on what questions and how questions and many times we also focus on why questions and then those instrument if you look at the instrument so the instrument we use most of the time we use open-ended questions and closed-ended questions 
the nature of data is a mixture of variables, words, images, and data analysis. We use the statistical analysis. That is, the statistical analysis can be two types. One is uh, descriptive statistical analysis, and another is inferential statistical analysis. And when you analyze the qualitative data, we easily analyze uh, textual data, or that is a voice of the people or image that we analyze. When you uh, present the report, that case it is a combination of qualitative quantity data and qualitative data. There's a quantity data. We know there's a quantity data focus usually focus on number. Qualitative data focus on narrative or voice or image other. If you look at uh, the mixed method research, we can see from at, from a, at a glance. Uh, you can see the strategy of inquiry there's uh, on the left side that is quantitative approach qualitative approach and mixed method approach so quantitative approach is really for the experimental research design and non-experimental research like that a uh, survey and method of data we use standardized taste or survey or observation and for this sort of method we use usually use a test survey questionnaire observation checklist if you look at the qualitative research approach and the research design will be case study or ethnographic research or phenomenology, narrative inquiry, grounded theory. Uh, and for research, for data collection, we usually use interview, FGD, document analysis, observation, questionnaire, or KI, my key informant interview. And for this sort of method, uh, we usually use uh, interview protocol, FGD protocol, observation guidelines, KI protocol as a tool or an instrument. If you look at the mixed method research, so mixed method research focus on actual combination of both that I mentioned earlier. So the design will be sequential, a concurrent or transformative uh, and combination of both qualitative and quantitative approaches. And method of data collection is actually combination of both qualitative and quantitative method of data collection. And if you talk about the instrument, that is the main focus of this of this presentation, that's instrument is actually the combination of quantitative instrument and qualitative instruments. Let's look at the instrument. That, that is the main focus of this webinar. Uh, webinar. The first instrument, the questionnaire. So what do you mean? What, what, what do you understand about or mean what do you understand about questionnaire? So questionnaire actually is self-reported data collection instrument filled out by research participants. And why we use questionnaire? We question used for collecting ideas, thoughts, or feelings, attitudes, beliefs, values, perception, personality, behavior, orientation, or practice of research participants. So, if you want any sort of data, uh, this sort of data, we need to use a survey questionnaire. Let's look at the principles of questionnaires construction. So, what sort of things we need to consider when you want to develop or prepare a questionnaire? The first one. Uh, we can see there's a make sure the questionnaire item match your research objectives and research questions. Is there any when you conduct research, uh, mixed method research, either we take research objective or research questions. Uh, so when you develop a questionnaire, so we need to focus on research objective or research questions. But how? Uh, look at this, look at this slide. You can see that is we usually take a research objective or research questions. So when you want to develop or prepare any uh, question, we need to look at the research questions. For example, here, three, here are three questions. The number question number one. So if you look at the question number one, so we need to consider there's to address these questions, to answer of this question or to address these objectives, what sort of items we need to uh, develop. Okay, so you know there's, when, uh, okay. When uh, we, uh, you know, Sina is, uh, is Sina is dead or Sina passed away. So we just, uh, why Sina was killed? This is this is uh, this is the questions. So to address this question, that is uh, uh, the police, uh, this, they are under him and they are and that is investigation officer is asking a lot of questions. So similarly, that is to to address one research questions or one objectives, you may uh, develop three, four, five, uh, just a uh, research for items that can address the research objective or research questions. Similarly, number two research questions or research objective to address this objective. So how many questions I need to, or how many items I need to develop, it depends on your uh, research objective and questions. Similarly, number three, so, so this way you need to go ahead. That is 
to uh, so there are three or four or five research questions objective you have to address is objective or research questions how many items question items you need it depends on the research objective and research questions next one is understand your research participant so when you want to develop a research develop a tool or research questionnaire not research question there is a survey questionnaire a questionnaire you need to consider who are your participants your person is a teacher or students or any sort of stakeholders so you need to consider and based on your consideration you need to prepare your questionnaire next of the use a uh, neutral and familiar language so sometimes uh, people want to show that uh, skills in language actually in research we don't need to show this sort of uh, credit or these sort of skills that is true highly skilled that is uh, high frequency words we don't need to use use simple language use neutral language so that your participant really understand and give answer to your questions next the right items that are clear precise relatively short okay no need to use the big question like uh, uh, different writer they use it long sentences no need to use long sentence use simple sentence use a short sentence and it should be clear and precise next one there is a do not use the leading or loaded questions what is the leading and loaded questions if you look at an example you can see that don't you agree that teachers should earn more money than they currently earn so actually i am expecting that people say yes so that means i'm guiding the people please tell this like like a journalist that journalists expect that that expected answer from the minister so don't do this okay just use neutral language uh, don't use loading questions loaded question or leading questions so instead of these sort of questions what question we can use you can see the next example which of the following option do you agree with teacher salaries are a little bit lower than than they should be teacher salaries are a little higher than they should be teacher salaries are about right i don't know or no option you can give so that means we don't know use or do, do, do not use uh, or should not use leading or loaded questions next one that is uh, avoid double bird questions so double bank question that means you are asking two questions at the same time in a survey question and if you uh, ask two questions at the same time so it would not be uh, suitable for the participant uh, to give answer there are other principles of constructing a questionnaire was avoid double negative questions double negative question two negative in one sentence this is an example there's do you agree or disagree following statements so agree or disagree so, the, so if you say they agree or disagree so that the two questions are here similarly if you see the statement that's a double negative i don't uh, think uh, teachers should not be required to supervise their student during covid 19 time so that is a double negative so we need to avoid this sort of double negative a statement or questions in questionnaire Next, to determine whether an open-ended and closed-ended question is needed. So, as a researcher, I need to I need to look at my research questions, and then I have to consider, uh, and that's I need to uh, ask questions. That's, do I really need both type of questions, closed-ended and open-ended questions? If you need, you can use. If you don't need, you don't need to use. Usually, mixed method research. That's the questions, the research questions, or research object we develop uh, that require. Uh, Close-ended and open-ended questions. Next, we consider the different types of response categories available for close-ended questioner item. So, when you develop the close-ended question item, so we need to use different types of close-ended questionnaire. I'm showing you some of the examples. One of the examples of um, close-ended questions are rating skills. Rating skill that's a numeric rating skill. The so like that. How would you rate the overall job performance of your school principal so it could be very low and very high so how do you rate it so there's five scale one two three four five so one is actually low and very low and five is very high 
So this is the numerical nu numerical rating. Another one that's numerically numeric numerical rating you can use Likert scale. So Likert scale you can see the next one. That's one, two, three, four, five. So there are four options scale. So instead of numerical rating, you can use scale fully anchored or you can use the number. So fully anchored uh, strongly disagree or disagree. Number three, neutral. Number four, agree. Or number five, uh, strongly agree. So this sort of uh, Likert scale we can use in questionnaire. Other examples, ranking. Sometimes we can use the ranking. So ranking used to find out the, what's the most important things. So here an example that you can see that is, uh, uh, please rank the importance of following qualities in a school principal. So which one is the most number one, number two, number three, number four principles for a uh, qualities for a school principal. And you can see there's one indicating most important and five indicating least important. So as a respondent, they will give number either one, two, three, what they consider the most important or least important. So this is called ranking. So this sort of uh, close side question, a researcher can use in questionnaire. Another one is a checklist. That's a where multiple responses uh, allowed. Uh, for example, which online platform do you use for online education? So sometimes that is a respondent, they may use uh, multiple uh, online platforms. So you, need, you can give the option, multiple op response option. There's a Google Classroom, Google Meet, Zoom, others. Another sort of close type question is multiple choice items. Multiple choice item, that means uh, you can see the question that is that, you know, we are from the, the four option, we can choose only one that is suitable for the respondent. If you look at the next uh, Principle is develop a questionnaire that is properly organized and easy for the participants to use. So that means uh, our questionnaire should be very organized that uh, the respondent can easily understand. That is, we are using that the structure of the question is well organized. For example, you can see number one, what is your gender? If it is so either male or female, if male go to question number five, if female go to question number two. So this is quite organized uh, question. Number two, you can see, did you participate in online classes during COVID-19? Yes, if yes, go to question number six, or if no, question number nine. So this is quite organized. So we need to use more organized uh, questionnaire. It is easy for the participant to give response. And another one that is, always pilot test your questionnaire. So what questionnaire we develop or prepared, we need to, we need to uh, test it going to the field. Um, otherwise it, it will not be valid. Otherwise uh, it will not be suitable to execute in the uh, field. You know, that is when you, uh, when you prepare a dress, we, we go to tailor and we just, we have a fitting room, we check it. So why we check it to test it. So similarly, when you even this when you cook uh, meat or uh, meat curry or anything, you taste it. Why? Because because people serving it to the guest, you need to test it whether it is suitable or it is right in taste or not. So similarly, before applying this taste in the uh, field, we need to uh, pilot it. It okay? We need to have pilot testing, and after piloting, if you need any required. Uh, correction or revision, we need to do it. Now we are looking at the types of questionnaire. We can find different types of questionnaire. One is closed-ended questionnaires, open-ended questionnaires, and combination of closed-ended and open-ended questions. I'm going to give you some examples from closed-ended questionnaire. And one of the items, some of the examples I showed you before, one of the examples is yes, no questions. So this is an example, yes, no questions. So you can use yes, no question. This is a closed type questions or closed ended questions. Like at a scale, this is another sort of uh, closed type question few minutes ago uh, that I showed you. And as a rating scale, this is a closed type questions. And the multiple response and multiple choice, this is a closed type question. Ranking is a closed type questions. And checklist, this is also closed type questions. 
Now I'm going to uh, show you a survey question here that you develop for a research. Uh, uh, recently conducted a study in Ban Beach and we use this questionnaire for survey. And when you develop a questionnaire, you need to, uh, you need to focus on some items. One is the thing that is, every questionnaire should have two part. One is that is a background information. You can see the background information. So this background information work as variable, work as variable. For example, you can see uh, a data or data, you can see data from gender perspective. You can see data from rural and urban perspective. You can see data from uh, age perspective. You can lo look at the data from uh, there's a year of experience. So, so these are the variables. So, so before prepare, when you prepare a uh, questionnaire, you need to develop, uh, you need to collect background information of the participant or respondent. So in this study, our team, we, it is a uh, teamwork, so uh, team study. So what we did that, we collected different sort of background information and we use this data, we, we uh, developed this question in Bangla because so our respondent, they can give the answer properly. They can really understand the questions and they give answer the questions properly. And in this question, we have different sort of research objective or research question or different themes. So for example, teaching learning uh, activities or listening and knowledge of teaching learning. So that is, that is pedagogical knowledge. How about the pedagogical knowledge of the teachers? So this is the one of the questions, one of the idea uh, of the, our research questions. And regarding that, we develop the Likert scale. Uh, Likert scale we develop, and you can see that is the scale and different sort of statement we use. Similarly, uh, we have another option, another uh, that is a theme or another concept or another questions was this, uh, that is teaching attitude teaching language attitude about teaching and learning. So attitude, you wanna see that's attitude of the teachers. So to uh, understand the attitude of the teachers, we set some sort of statements and on the right side, we use some uh, scale that is a Shampu Nakmat, Dimat, Akmat, Shampu Nakmat. So four scale we use, four scale we use. Uh, similarly, that is skills, we check the skills. So what about the skills? How teachers think about their skills? So regarding the skills, we, we use some sort of statement, some sort of statements. Only no, how, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt you. Are you showing the sample questionnaire? Because uh, yes, yes, we, we can't see it. Uh, oh, you cannot see it, Appa. Oh, I'm sorry, Appa. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Let me check from my file. Go to state. All right, okay. Thank you, Moninur. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Now you can see. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, I thought. Well, you know, if it is not too much trouble, can you uh, repeat yourself so yeah, that sure. the participants can see the examples and listen to your explanation? Okay. Thank uh, you. So thank you. So, when you develop a research, you develop a questionnaire or survey questionnaire. We need to consider there is a two types of information. That is, one is actually uh, the question. Uh, the, one is a background information. Another one is that is the info, uh, information we are expecting from the respondent through our uh, questionnaire. Here you can see the background information. Can you see the background information? Uh, do you need to make it uh, larger? Is it clear or not? Apa? It seems okay. Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's clear, clear, sir. It's clear. Okay. Sir. okay. So here you can see uh, this study we conducted in Ban Bays uh, recently, uh, our team from my year, and we developed this questionnaire. And here you can see that is uh, first Potomong Show, Shadhan Toto, that's background information. Why we collect background information? So this background information is very necessary for conducting a mixed method research or any kind of research. You can see the first one that is a government or non-government or madrasa. So when you check the, when you analyze the data, we see that is what about the scenario, compare between uh, government school and non-government schools. Government schools and uh, 
uh, madrasa. So we can compare, we can find the scenario, what is happening, what is happening and what is the situation uh, of this, uh, this institution. Another thing is uh, gender, you can see that is we can see the data from gender perspective. We can see data from uh, age perspective, experience perspective, education perspective. Okay. And we can see data from the training perspective. So the people who receive training and people who didn't receive training, who receive training and didn't receive training, is there any difference in their performance? If the difference in their knowledge, it differs their, uh, uh, in their attitude or practice. So we can see. So when you develop or prepare any questionnaire, we need to collect background information. But we need to consider that is what backend information we need to have, what we need to require. It depends on your research. And here you can see that is the another part. This part is uh, that is the questionnaire, the questionnaire part. So the before part was that is the background information. This is questionnaire part. But th that we said the Dito Angkor, the second part. And in this part, we divided our research questions in different themes or different patterns. So one of the research questions was that is to understand the knowledge of pedagogical knowledge of the teachers. Shikon Shikan Bishai Dharuna, knowledge. So what about the knowledge they have, about pedagogical knowledge they have? To understand that, we develop some sort of statement that is easily used in pedagogy. So this is the statement that we uh, develop here. And on the right side, we use the scale. So what they think, it is their self-reported questionnaire. That is the, what they think. And they will fill out this questionnaire. They will give tick mark. Another research question we have, we had that is their attitude. What about the attitude of the teaching and learning of the teachers? So regarding the attitude, uh, so we set some sort of statement. Uh, uh, statement and on the right side, the scales. So this also, uh, this is actually Likert scale. And another research question we had, their skills. So how much teachers are skills in teaching and learning? So it is their self-understanding. So what they think, how they perceive that is, what level of skills they have. So they are considering their skills and they are putting tick mark as per their understanding. Similarly, that is the practice. Similar their practice. So how they are practicing these skills in the classroom. And so according to their practice, we uh, set some statement and on the right side, there are some scale. So this is a kind of a survey questionnaire and this question is totally Likert scale based. Next to the questionnaire, open-ended question. So what is the open-ended question? So open-ended question is not the yes, no questions or Likert scale question or ranking like this. You have freedom to write some. So the open-ended open question that is, can you say that is, uh, there is some example, there is, a, but number one and two, you need to write something. I'm not giving, uh, you need to, number three, number four. So you have freedom to write anything. You have freedom to write anything regarding to answer the, these questions. So this is the open-ended questions. And uh, there's uh, the, the people who are English banking, you know there's what is the open-ended questions, what is the closed-ended questions, I think, you know it. Um, Next one is a mixed math question. Mixed math is a combination of open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. This is the part of a questionnaire. This is the part of a questionnaire. You can see the two questions are open-ended and next two questions are closed-ended. Closed-ended. So this is the mixed approach. This is the mixed method tools. Or mixed tools. That is closed-ended questions and open-ended questions as here. Now we are going to show you another uh, sample questionnaire. Uh, that focus on uh, closed-ended questions and open-ended questions. Uh, now, can you see it? Yes, sir. Okay. So th this is study. I uh, conducted this study a couple of years uh, back. There is uh, there is uh, English version Bangladesh, English version Shikha, Puttasha, Shomosha Shomadhan. So in this question, this is a question and it is a open-ended, we, uh, we, I added open-ended and closed-ended questions or open-ended items. You can see the first one, the background information and you can see that is the question items, you can see one, these are the open-ended, but next part is closed-ended. You can do this, like our skills are here, 9, 10, 
11, 12, 13, all are like a scale. That's closed type questions. You can see. But next part, you can see uh, that is open ended questions are here. So the people can give their own opinion, uh, not fixing, uh, I'm not fixing them to give the answer that I gave here. So this is uh, this questionnaire, uh, this questionnaire uh, included both uh, open ended and closed ended items. Uh, so last part was the question and now we are uh, moving to observation checklist. So observation checklist, another instrument that can be used for both quantitative research and qualitative research. But when you talk about the, when you talk about the checklist, that would be quantitative tool. When you say there's an observation schedule or observation guideline, that will be qualitative too. So that means observation is a method for data collection. So we can use observation for data collection as a, as a method. But for observation, we use tool, so instrument. But we can use this instrument uh, when we conduct quantity, when you want to collect number, we use observation. We call it observation checklist. And when we collect qualitative data, then we say it is observation guidelines or observation schedule or observation protocol. So different writers has used different uh, name. So observation is watching the, what is observation? Just observation is watching the behavioral pattern of people. Patterns, uh, sorry, Mr. Patterns, TRNA, so patterns of the people. So that means we can object the classroom, we can object the field, we can observe anything. You know, there is a Shaikh Shiraj. Shaikh Shiraj goes to field to object the uh, situation of the farmer, their product, their uh, crops and anything, their fertilizer. So this is actual field observation. It's called observation, but it is called field observation. Sometimes in a spectre, they come to visit or vice chancellor come to visit the different department. This is observation. But sometimes he used uh, tools, sometimes he doesn't use the tool. But as a researcher, when you visit the field, when you observe something, we need, need to use a tool. Either it is checklist or either it's a guideline. So quantity and when you develop an observation checklist, we need to follow some questions or some uh, criteria. There's First one is who is object. So you are a researcher, whether you will object or on behalf of you, somebody will object. So that things you need to think. Another thing that is which participant who will be observed. So which participant will be observed. So that is a teacher will be object, a student will be observed, activities will be observed. So that things you need to consider. Uh, next one there is when the observation are to take place. So when, so what time you are going to observe and where uh, the observation are to be carried out and how the observation are to be done. So all the things, all the questions you need to consider. At the same time, it is a matter of ethics. So if you want to observe a classroom, teachers of a classroom, you need to collect, uh, collect, inform, collect uh, permission from the teachers. So it is a part of the ethics. If you look at the next point, there is a quantitative uh, observation easily generate quantitative data like frequency and percentage. And various kind of observation checklists can be used for data collection and continue. I can show you two examples. Later, I'll show another examples from my research. And one thing that is the to be object, we can use yes, no questions, a checklist for observation. So for example, what is the checklist? If you look at the checklist, the word checklist, if you go to a shopping mall, so you, you, you make a list, you go to the shopping mall and you put the list of okay, which you have bought, which you have not bought. So this is kind of checklist. Really? Observation checklist is means that case what you are going to observe, whether you object this, that, 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 not. So if this is your observation checklist. Left side, if you look at here, you know that the TCG, teacher's curriculum guide. So two years back, NCTV, they developed teacher's curriculum guide and they expect that uh, secondary school teacher, English teacher, they will follow this guideline for exchange, for exchange greetings or warm up acti activities, elicitation, peer work, group work, listening activities, speaking, reading, writing, vocabulary and grammar. So as a researcher, you want to see that is whether teachers are really following this structure, whether researchers are doing these activities or, or teachers are doing these activities in the classroom or not. So you can develop a checklist, yes, no checklist. So you can do okay, yes or no, whether they are doing this or not, you can put tick mark, yes or not, yes or not, yes or not. This is a one kind of yes, no checklist, observation checklist. On the right side, you can see that is 
uh, if you want to see the quality of the their activities so that time we need to use the scale so for example that is very good good accepted poor and very poor so you can say exchange greeting whether it is very good good or accepted or poor or very poor so you can put tick mark if you necess if necessary you can write the comments if you write the comments so this comments will be qualitative data on the left side you can see the checklist there's a comments box so if you write some comments this comments will be qualitative data if you don't write in comments just put tick mark so this tick mark will be that is quantitative data so tick marks that means the other number one two three four five okay so this way this is the observation checklist and can you can give tick marks so if you collect if you observe 100 teachers you observe 100 classes 100 teachers then you can see how many teachers are exchanging greetings how many teachers are doing warm up activities how many teachers are doing that is a uh, fast elicitation at the same time you can see the quality that is how many teachers are doing these activities and how about their quality it is very good or good accepted poor or very poor you can analyze this way okay this is an observation checklist and it is a quantitative observation checklist and another thing that's you can use this check if you use this guideline if you understand you can see that there are, uh, there are some things that items that you can observe object so look at this item if you write the notes if you write the notes not giving any number not giving any tick mark just write down the notes these notes will be qualitative data that i mentioned a little bit earlier and that will be observation guideline so this is the items that will guide you what you need to observe in the classroom so this is a guideline so this guideline help you to observe and and based on your observation you will make notes so what the teacher did so you will make notes how about the uh, pair work how about the group work you can make notes so what time he do how long he did it okay whether it is good or bad what problem he faced you can make notes so these sort of notes will be your qualitative data and this in that case it will be observation guidelines rather than observation checklist Recently, we conducted a research. Uh, uh, there's a at nine. There is a funded by government. Uh, there's a 21st century skills. We wanted to do that. That is how the teachers are practicing 21st century skills. So we we consider that there are six skills as 21st century skill. That is critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creativity, and imagination. Student leadership and personal development, citizenship. So I. Our team wanted to see that is how teachers are practicing, whether teachers are really practicing or not, and how their frequency. So how frequently they are practicing these, these things. So on behalf of us, not me or my research team, they didn't observe this. So on behalf of us, uh, our, just, we hired some people, we trained them, and on behalf of the research team, they went to school and they observed. And based on observation, they put tick mark, whether never, rarely, occasionally, or frequently. So based on this data, we analyzed the data, and it, it gave us quantitative data. Now we are moving to interview protocol. Interview protocol, uh, you can see this interview protocol, that is our interview schedule or interview guideline. So why we uh, use interview? Interview is a method of data collection. And for this method, if you use any tool, that will be interview protocol or interview guideline or interview schedule. So why we use interview? We collect interview for in-depth data, for in-depth data from the participants, our thoughts, our beliefs, or knowledge, or anything that is, but that should be in-depth. So for in-depth uh, data, we usually use interview. And for collecting data, uh, we use the tool I use that is interview protocol. And the data we collect from the interview that can that can uh, support the quantitative data in mixed method research. We know that there's the three types of qualitative interview: one is structured, semi-structured, and unstructured. Let's see what is the structured interview. Structured interview that is you have a question set and this is the order. That, for example, you have ten questions and one to ten questions. In a structured interview, you cannot uh, start with the five or six or or you can start to one, then go to the three, or then come back to 
you cannot do. In structure interview, you need to follow the structure from one to 10, one after another, one after another. And you cannot use any follow-up questions. That this is called structured uh, interview. And another one is semester interview. Semester interview, that means you have a structure, but you can use some follow-up questions. Usually in a talk show, in, in, in talk show, we saw there is a, there's a, uh, sometimes they have a structure, but they use semi structure interview. For example, TVC, DBC, uh, Rajkaon, or other program, we can say that they have, of, of course, when they conduct the interview, they have a set of questions, but at the same time, they ask follow up questions. If you ask follow up questions, that will be semi structured. And last one, there's honest, unstructured question. Unstructured is quite informal. So you don't need to follow any structure. So you can uh, informally ask questions, but you need to you need to have a set of questions. But you can uh, break the order, and you can use follow-up questions. Like questionnaire uh, here uh, for interview, we need to follow some uh, protocol to prepare a interview schedule or interview protocol. Uh, first one's prepare interview. Uh, protocol keeping it aligned with the research questions. Again, we need to think of how many research questions we have, three, four, or five. Is that we take three or four? Okay, so look at the, that I mentioned earlier, that is uh, about uh, when you are talking about uh, questionnaire. So look at the research questions, and for research question, how many questions item you need to ask. So your question should be aligned with the research questions. You cannot go beyond the research questions okay next one that is prepare it in a way that it may lead to develop some patterns and themes and uh, i told you that is when i when you develop uh, a, a tools you need to use some pattern okay question number one what question you ask question number two what items you last question number three what you, so this is the pattern so question number is a one even that's question number one can be one thing question number two can be a theme Question number three can be a theme. Sometimes you can get that, some data you may get that could be emerging theme. Or, okay, so that is different things. But your questions, you look at the questions and this question can be your pattern. So you need to develop your question item uh, such way that it can develop a pattern at the end of collecting data. Uh, another interesting thing is when you develop a, a research questions that is interview or questionnaire, you need to consider the how we'll analyze the data. So that plan should come earlier. So how will you analyze the data? So considering that part, considering that section, that phase, you need to develop the data. You need to develop the questionnaire. Otherwise, or develop the interview sheet. Otherwise, it will be in trouble later. So everything should be planned, systematic way, the well planned. Uh, the research you need to conduct. Next one, do not use a question that hurt the person feeling or make them feel comfortable. So you don't need to ask anyone that is this sort of question that is uh, the people become uh, very uh, uncomfortable or just they get hurt. So we don't need to uh, ask these sort of questions. Next one that is use open-ended questions. Usually in uh, interview, we collect in-depth data. So most of the time we ask why question and how questions. Why question and how questions. Uh, so why question that is we want on in-depth data. So, uh, so that means we need to add why questions and how questions. Next one that is questions should be specific. Questions should be specific that we mentioned earlier, not be too long, not be too clumsy, not be uh, uh, that is um, complex. It should be specific. Language should be simple and precise that I mentioned earlier and collect back the information of the participants. I told you earlier there is an informal layer that is whether it's quality data, one quantity data, when you develop any protocol, any tool or an instrument, you need to collect the background information of the participant. Especially is very important for qualitative data. Quality, why? Because the people say, what the people say, uh, the people perception, people background, it has impact, the voice of the people. So that means what you are saying, what you are giving opinion, that is part of your experience, part of your education, part of your everything uh, that, uh, that impacted on your opinion. 
So we need to collect uh, background information. This background information will help you to segregate the data, to analyze the data from different perspective, from background perspective that I mentioned before, before that is from background perspective, that is for example, education perspective, experience perspective, age perspective, uh, so from different perspective, we can use, analyze the data using this background information. Next one is the interview schedule not record a participant more than two, 20 to 30 minutes to answer. So that means we don't need to make a long list of questions, item in a protocol or in a questionnaire. If it is long, so people will be bored to give answer. They will not be interested. So that's why it should be, it should, uh, it should be short not too short, not too long, as per need of your study. And uh, another important thing is that before collecting data, you need to interview data, you need to build a rapport with the participant. That's very important to collect qualitative data. Otherwise not, people will give you data. Other people say yes, no, very good, or they will not actually respond to you. Uh, this is an example of interview protocol. Recently, uh, many of you know, there's a conducted online uh, teaching at private universities. We conducted this, this study and we developed an interview protocol. Uh, interview protocol. And you can see that uh, in interview, ask the participants. This interview should look at the students. The student, we ask the student this information, background information, uh, which they are, they are studying, which university, which subject we ask them. So this is the background information. Based on the background information, we analyze the data later. Next one, the access and readiness. This is one of the research questions. So based on this access and readiness, we develop two questions. Regarding materials, that is another research question or research uh, item. Uh, based on, we develop one questions. And you can see why questions. Most of the time you can see why questions. Because in quality data, why question and how question is very important. And how if uh, pedagogical techniques, assessment outcomes, sustainability of online teaching in Bangladesh. So these are the theme or these are the pattern that I developed earlier. And based on the pattern, we, we develop these questions. And these pattern are connected to my three research questions, three research questions. So that means it will help us, it will help us to develop, to analyze our qualitative data. Now we are moving to FGD focused group discussion, sometimes people say focus group interview, some people say focus group. Okay, so different scholar use different terms. So focus group uh, discussion, usually a moderator leads a discussion with a small group of people to understand group interview. So one thing that's interview and FGD, what is the main difference? Interview will get, give the individual information, individual thoughts, individual opinion, individual perception, but FGD will give the collective perception, group perception. How we conducted FGD? So a group of people will face interview together. So, you know, like a talk show that is in a talk show, you can see that is, uh, there is one uh, anchor, uh, an anchor, and there's three or four, five guests. So the, he or she asks questions, all of them. So this is a group discussion. So it is focus group session. They have one topic, focus on this topic, and in a group, so he is or she is collecting data from the uh, participants. So similarly, so in a focus group discussion, we need to have a group of people, but this group should be homogeneous. Homogeneous, sometimes it could be six, sometimes seven, eight, nine, it depends, 12, it could be. So it depends on your research. It depends on your research. But if you take four, 12 or 10, it is tough to manage it. So you need to take helping hand and it's tough to manage the data. So better take less people that is not more than eight, six, eight, or maximum uh, nine. Don't go beyond nine or eight like this. Less is preferable, okay. Another group, uh, the group should be homogeneous that I mentioned. If focus and topic being discussed, so group in, in focus group discussion, we easily uh, focus on a particular topic and we discuss, we collect data through discussion, we collect data from the participants. Next one, there is a, uh, in a single study, we can do two to four FGD uh, are very common, but if it is a large study, national study, 
uh, it's a quality is a mixed method study like national study we need to collect more fgt it could be 20 it could be 30 it depends on the volume of your research but if it's a single uh, small study so two or four fgt is enough another open ended questions are used in fgt like quality like uh, a questionnaire like which is interview in FGD, we use actual open-ended questions. We want to uh, collect information, but at the same time, in-depth information. Next one, usually, if we, uh, FGD may take one to two hours. One to two hours, why? Because we have the number of participants uh, are sitting together. We are collecting uh, collective information. Of course, it will take more time. It will not be like interview. That is, okay, 30 minutes. It will take one to two hours. It depends on the number. It depends on the your number of questions you have to answer from the to get answer from the participants. This is a sample uh, FGD. So FGD and uh, interview is very similar type. But FGD, I again I'm saying there is FGD that is uh, that you ask the group, but interview you ask person, one person, individual information and it's group person. So this is an FGD. We uh, we have I, uh, our team have conducted a study. That's a HECAP project. In HECAP project, we conducted as an impact of HECAP uh, over the last ten years. We we conducted a such impact study. And impact and one of the component was university industry partnership. So to check the university partnership, we collected data from the participant who are engaged in university industry partnership in conducted research. We collected data this group of people. And we set a FGD guideline, and we have a, some sort of pattern, some of the criteria, effectiveness. So to get understanding of effectiveness of the project, project as universal partnership, we ask three questions. To understand the efficiency, we ask three questions. To understand impact, we ask one question. Lesson learned, one question, and sustainability, we ask another question. So this is a pattern. So this data, if you develop this pattern, I told earlier, this pattern will help you to analyze the data later. Okay. And you can uh, actually, it, uh, so before developing this sort of AGD, you, need, you can develop a matrix that I showed you earlier, a matrix that will help you to collect data. And sometimes you can see that it's okay, whether I'm addressing the qu uh, question number one or question number two or team number one or two or three, that can help you to keep aligned. Uh, last one is test development. I'm not sure that is test development time. That's okay. Test development. This is the uh, last one. Test development. Why we use the test? Why with the test? You know, that's a, one of the type of quantity research is uh, experiment. Is that in experimental research we develop the test? Develop the test. For example, you wanna say that is after doing listening. Uh, Okay, before that I want to say this, okay. Test of experimental research, we, we develop tests. And when you wanna develop a test, uh, we need to consider what do you want to test? How do you want to test it? What indicators, what rubrics will be used? So one example I can say that is for, uh, you, you know, IELTS exam, IELTS exam, there is a, a different sort of rubrics. In IELTS, there is a six, a nine band. So how they give the nine band? So there are the two giving the nine band, there's a rubric for speaking, there's some rubrics for uh, li listening, there's some criteria for reading, there are some criteria for writing, there are some rubrics. So based on the rubrics that they, they give score, this is the one thing. Another thing that is, when you want experimental research, why we conduct the experimental research? Experimental research we conduct to check the actually um, intervention or something, the outcome you know. For example, uh, in experimental sometimes pre-test, intervention and post-test. Pre-test, intervention and post-test. So for example, there is a first, first student, you can take the uh, language skill, listening skills, listening skills or speech skills, you can take a test. But how will conduct the test? You need to develop a test. You develop a questions. The qu test that is the questions, you develop a set of questions. Based on that, you need to conduct the test. But how will develop the test? So to develop the test, you need to, you need to, you need to develop an indicator, a rubrics. 
And you wanna, if you wanna give the marks, you need to, based on the rubrics, you need to give a score. I wanna show you some of the example. Can you see this one? Shut up. Yes, sir, we can see. Okay, this is a test. Actually, this test we develop uh, with partnership of Leeds University. Uh, in 2016, we conducted research uh, with partnership of Leeds University, and it was funded by British Council. And they have a project, ACE project, that was run by the BRAC. That time, uh, we we were assigned to um, see the, we are trying to find out the impact of this project. And that time, we want to see that is how uh, youth girls, uh, after project, what level of speaking skill they have developed. So to test that, to check that speaking skill, uh, with the support of Leeds University, we develop a test. This is being test, a greetings and information induction, introduction, you can see. So to check the greetings and introduction, there are some questions you can see. And giving information and place of living, there's some questions. And extent response, like and disliking, there's some questions. So there are some sort of question. So we develop these tools, this develop this test. This is a test, and this test for speaking, the speaking test. So based on this test, we gave them a score. But how we gave them a score, I'll show you some rubrics. I'm closing this one. So this is the tools, speaking tools. Usually, you know, many of you face us speaking test. So how they give a score? So there are some rubrics, and there are some criteria based on that they give, give a score. So I'm showing you, that's one of some, another one of the rubric, Yes, sir. We can see it. Okay, you can see that is the grammar and vocabulary. When you, um, as a speaking test, we focus on grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, uh, interactive communication, and global achievement. So these are the criteria. These are the um, global level criteria, and based on the criteria, you can see these are the indicators. Sorry, these are the indicators, and there is a score. You can see the score: one point five. 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, like that. So this is the score. So which level their performance, was, which quality they're showing based on their performance, we, we, we are giving them a score. So I'm showing you another, another uh, file that will give you the idea about the score. So that means this is the actually the rubric that will help you to give, you, give them the score. So th this sort of performance, they will get this score. This sort of problem, they will go this, get this score. These are the things. And I'm showing another file. You can see the score, grammar, vocabulary that I showed there uh, in the last uh, document. Here, similar this grammar and vocabulary, pronunciation, interactive communication. So this is the goal. So based on the performance, we give them the score. So uh, these are the uh, rubric and these are the score criteria. Based on them, we can give them a score. And when you get the score from the, for example, we tested 30 students or 40 students or 100 students. So when you get the score, then we can analyze the score and mean, media, mode, these are things. And we can see that is, uh, we can see the performance. Okay, so this is the test. The, the last one I showed the first, uh, this is the test. So I'm sharing that, okay. So test table of that, so that means test mode. So similarly, when you wanna uh, uh, test this listening skill, so sometimes you can adopt materials. You know, there's a, there's a lot of materials, Cambridge SL examination. They have a lot of materials, Cambridge IELTS exam, they have materials. So this is also a test, listening test. Listening test, there are a lot of questions. This is the question, standardized questions. So you can, uh, you can use this test, but this test is developed based on some criteria. And uh, these tests have branding, there's a band score. So what score you can get, which band you will get. So that means this is this test. If you want to develop a test, you need to think that is 
what is the purpose, what you want to assess, or who, who you want to apply it, so how you want to apply it. So everything you need to consider and you need to develop the test. And when you get the test, after uh, execution of the test, you'll, uh, you'll get the score and you later you will analyze the score uh, for your research purpose. So that's all. Um, and another thing that's key, uh, just I'm finishing, that's key, key informant in for interview, just this is, this is another research method and tool that used for uh, collecting data from the key of the person, key person of an institution, for example, vice chancellor, for example, the head of the department, head of the institution. So we usually KI for the chief person of the institution to collect data, uh, overall data of the institution. That, that, so KI, interview and FGD are very similar, very similar, but their execute, their application is different, uh, their participant is different, but their tools preparation is very much similar. Thank you very much uh, for your patience.